We start tonight at the border shutdown and the clock is ticking in Texas. To expand our border security capabilities, uh, we are building a new Texas military department base camp. The small city of Eagle Pass, Texas, continues to be the site of a political and physical standoff between the state and the federal government. Minutes ago, Abbott made an unexpected announcement that has sent shockwaves through national security discussions. There's a rapid shift in Biden's soft policies, particularly concerning the divisive border policy, sparking intense debates between Democrats and Republicans. Abbott and his team find themselves in a challenging position as they directly challenge President Biden. Join us as we delve into Texas's bold strategy where each development is making headlines. Abbott, see you later, Biden. Controversial move. If that bill passed, President Biden would shut the border down. Bright and early, every pair of eyes seems fixated on the Southwest eagerly awaiting the grand performance from none other than Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Apparently, he's gearing up to drop some monumental news about America's security. But let's cut through the chase, shall we? The man's on a mission to spotlight what he calls the biggest border crisis. And who does he blame? Naturally, it's all laid at the feet of President Joe Biden, accusing him of sitting on his hands instead of enforcing existing laws. According to Abbott, Biden's toolbox is apparently bursting at the seams with all the necessary gadgets and gizmos to mirror Texas's own border antics, denying entry left and right as if it was some kind of sport. But oh, the drama doesn't stop there. Abbott's pointing fingers faster than a gunslinger at high noon, claiming Biden practically rolled out the red carpet for drug cartels and their illicit cargo of human lives. It's a narrative so spicy, it could make your eyes water. And let's not forget the show that unfolded in New York City. According to Abbott, it's etched in American memories like a bad tattoo. Now, for the main event, Governor Abbott, flanked by no less than 20 state representatives, is poised to reveal his master plan to beef up border enforcement. This spectacle is set to unfold in Eagle Pass at the scenic Shelby Park just a hop, skip, and a jump away from where a posse of Republican governors recently rallied in support. It's like the sequel no one asked for, promising more of the same hardline stance. And just in case you missed the memo, America is in the throes of the biggest border crisis ever seen, or so Abbott would have us believe. It's all thanks to Biden, if Abbott's narrative is to be followed, who apparently gave the green light for cartels to turn the border into their own personal playground. And those makeshift barriers, containers crowned with razor wire resembling some dystopian DIY project, are heralded as triumphs in this supposed war against illegal crossings. According to the Texas Gospel, this miraculous reduction in border breaches is the result of stellar teamwork, a veritable all-star cast of state agencies banding together in the name of sovereignty. The Texas authorities, led by the Grand Maestro himself, have been busy, very busy. They've racked up over 39,000 criminal arrests. Yes, you heard that right. And let's not gloss over the whopping 480,000 illegal migrants they've apprehended. It seems like they're collecting these figures like trophies on a mantelpiece. But wait, there's more. They've managed to deter over 95,000 attempts at illegal entry and engaged in a staggering 4,300 bailouts, it's as if they're setting some kind of twisted high score. And the charges? Oh, they've been busy bees with the paperwork, filing over 19,000 charges for smuggling. It's like a production line over there. But here's the kicker. Thanks to the trusty legislators standing like loyal soldiers behind the Texas leadership, smuggling has now become an express ticket to a decade behind bars. That's right, a whole 10 years, they've put a law into action that's as unforgiving as the Texas sun in July. If you're caught smuggling someone across the grand expanse of Texas, you might as well pack your bags for a long stay in the state's not-so-welcoming accommodations. 
Now, let's not forget the Texas National Guard, the unsung heroes of this saga. They've had over a million encounters with illegal immigrants. Just imagine that for a second, over a million. They've turned back more than 990,000 individuals desperate for a slice of the American dream, a figure so high it almost sounds made up, but who's counting, right? And the barriers, oh, the barriers. They've constructed over 160 miles of them. This isn't just your average backyard fence we're talking about. We're talking razor wire fencing that looks like something out of a dystopian nightmare, anti-climb barriers that would make a mountain goat think twice, heavy-duty Konex boxes that scream, keep out, and even buoys in the river for that extra touch of, you shall not pass. Altogether, these fortifications stretch for more than 160 miles. It's like they're building their own version of the Great Wall. But instead of keeping out invaders from the north, this one's for the weary, the poor, the huddled masses yearning to breathe free. After the show at Eagle Pass, we dive into Texas's big project, building their own answer to a problem they say is too big to ignore. Big borders are built? Racism or security? The Lone Star State has crowned itself the king of do-it-yourself projects, specifically building its very own border wall. Oh yes, step aside the federal government, Texas is taking over. They've slapped together more pieces of the Trump-era wall than the former president himself managed to erect within these proud Texan borders over the last six months. It's like watching a DIY home improvement show, but with more concrete and political posturing. But here's the kicker. Despite Texas hogging a hefty two-thirds of the US-Mexico border, it's only the stage for about 30% of the migrant crossings. The majority of these travelers seem to prefer the scenic routes through California, Arizona, and New Mexico, which collectively roll out the welcome mat for 70% of crossings. It seems the word's out that Texas is not the neighborhood of choice anymore. Now, why the sudden shift? Well, Texas has turned into the least welcoming place on earth for migrants, armed with all sorts of deterrents and barriers. It used to be that under the early days of the Biden administration, Texas was where the action was, a veritable migrant magnet. But now, not so much. Picture this. We're standing in what used to be a bustling park area, a hotspot where daily crossings once ranged from 2,000 to a whopping 4,000 individuals. But since the Texas National Guard took over, it's like they've turned the place into a ghost town, with daily averages dropping to less than 10. It's like they're trying to set a new low score in some bizarre reverse popularity contest. And let's not forget the grand narrative Texas is selling. All this, they claim, is because the big bad Biden isn't playing the border game right. The Texas playbook suggests that the president has many laws and resources that could make the whole country very secure and controlled, similar to having their own small kingdom. They suggest that if only Biden would take a leaf out of Texas's book and start denying entry with the zeal of a nightclub bouncer, America's border issues would vanish overnight. It's a story of Texas pride, a tale where the Lone Star State positions itself as the savior of American sovereignty, armed with nothing but concrete, steel, and sheer willpower. The Texas National Guard is getting a standing ovation for their tremendous leadership. It seems they're not just part of the team, they're leading the varsity squad. But wait, the plans for the future are even grander. We're talking about beefing up the area with more National Guard troops, because obviously, Texas believes there's no such thing as too much security. And what's their strategy? more miles of razor wire and anti-climb barriers, because nothing says welcome, quite like a shiny new fence topped with a welcoming garland of razor wire. But let's not forget the other heroes in this narrative, the legislative branch. Yes, the folks in suits and ties who arm the front lines with the legal tools to build this fortress Texas. 
the narrative wouldn't be complete without tipping hats to the Texas House of Representatives. It seems everything from the boots on the ground to the spikes in the wire is all thanks to their tireless efforts. It's a group effort, they say, a real team bonding experience. Now enter stage left, Chairman Greg Bonin, the man with the plan and the budget, the governor's right-hand man when it comes to appropriations, Bonin steps up to the mic, ready to sing praises. Thank you, Governor, he begins, setting the scene for a flashback to mid-2021. It was a simpler time when the Governor summoned him for a chat that would change everything. Operation Lone Star was already in motion, but oh, the plot was just thickening. The Governor laid it out bare. The border situation was unlike anything they'd ever seen. A crisis of epic proportions. The old playbook, useless. The previous efforts? Child's play. This was the big leagues now, and Texas was stepping up to the plate. Next up, Texas isn't just talking tough. They're putting their money where their mouth is, showing what they'll do to keep control. The riskiest? $11.6 billion Texan gamble. All right, time for the next installment in the Grand Texas Saga, where the stakes are high and the budget even higher. Welcome to the chapter where Texas, under the Grand Marshalship of Governor Abbott, Speaker Phelan, and Lieutenant Governor Patrick, decides to grab the bull by the horns. It's like they've fashioned themselves as the Border Security Avengers, stepping into the breach where they perceive the federal government has apparently dropped the ball. The commitment, unwavering, the approach, all hands on deck. Now let's talk numbers, because oh, have they ballooned. Under Trump's reign, Texas was spending a cool $1.6 billion on border antics. But Wade Biden enters the stage, and suddenly Texas is shelling out a staggering $11.6 billion to essentially do the same dance. That's right. The Lone Star State is now pouring out cash like it's going out of style all in the name of deterrence. And guess what? They claim it's working. The proof, they say, is right under your feet in this very park where chaos once reigned supreme. And now, crickets. Diving deeper into this fiscal feast, $3.1 billion is earmarked for barriers and other border fineries. And then there's the $200 million golden handshake to shuttle illegal immigrants off to sanctuary cities elsewhere, because let's be clear, Texas doesn't roll out the welcome mat for sanctuary cities. The rest of this eye-watering sum, it's funneled into the Texas Military Department and the Department of Public Safety to keep the human and operational gears grinding. Hats off to them, or so the script reads, but here's the kicker, the grand finale, if you will. The governor, the speaker, the lieutenant governor, and the entire ensemble cast standing before you, they're all in. They've drawn their line in the sand, making it crystal clear that as long as they see the federal government as sitting on its hands, they're more than happy to step into the spotlight and take the lead. It's Texas's world, and we're just living in it, they seem to say. So, thank you. They conclude, leaving us to ponder just how deep Texas's pockets go and just how wide the chasm between federal and state visions can stretch. Welcome to the wild, wild west of modern politics, where the only thing bigger than the ambitions are the budget allocations. Now take your seats, ladies and gentlemen, for the next act in this Texas-sized drama featuring none other than Representative Spiller. He strides to the podium with the air of a man who's about to drop some truth bombs, or at least that's how he sees it. According to him, the Biden administration might as well be a ghost when it comes to border security, invisible, inaudible, and completely absent. The federal government's failure to enforce immigration laws, it's not just an oversight, it's a full-blown abandonment, if you let Spiller tell it. And Texas? 
Well, they're not just disappointed, they're downright indignant. Now let's talk about SB4, the hero of our story, according to Spiller & Co. With the flourish of Governor Abbott's pen, this piece of legislation has been crowned the mightiest, most groundbreaking border security bill to ever grace the state, or the nation for that matter. This isn't just a new chapter, it's an entirely new book, according to the Texan legislature. For the first time, Texas lawmen can haul in individuals crossing from Mexico at non-official entry points, a power they're practically salivating over. But wait, there's more. This landmark bill isn't just about rounding up and sending back those who dare to tread on Texan soil without a golden ticket. Oh no, it's about prosecution and incarceration, about setting a precedent that Texas is not just its own state, but practically its own country when it comes to immigration policy and constitutional. Spiller throws that word around like a shield, brandishing the Arizona case precedent like a sword, claiming this new law is in perfect harmony with federal guidelines despite what those pesky critics might say. And let's not forget the grand finale, the cherry on top of Spiller's defiant speech. Texas, in his words, doesn't just have the right, but practically a divine mandate to secure its borders, constitution in hand. They're not just enforcing laws, they're upholding the very fabric of American sovereignty, or so the narrative goes, the tension heats up as Texas and the federal government face off with Texas not backing down and ready for a fight. Troxclair gets Biden's eye on the border. Here we are again, folks, at the next chapter of Texas's never-ending telenovela against the Biden administration. This time, it's not just about border security, it's personal. The feds have thrown down the gauntlet challenging Texas's new policies, and oh, how Texas relishes the confrontation. Bring it on, they say, with the bravado of a high school quarterback before the big game. They're not just ready for a courtroom brawl, they're practically rolling out the red carpet for it. Representative Spiller, with the tip of his hat, is all but popping the popcorn, ready to watch the legal fireworks. He's not just committed, He's practically auditioning for the role of Texas's next superhero, with Governor Abbott as his sidekick, vowing to protect the Lone Star State from the evils of federal oversight. Then steps in, Representative Troxclair, turning the drama up a notch. According to him, every Texan is practically a border agent, given the statewide impact of border happenings. It's a bold claim, suggesting that from Amarillo to Austin, every Texan is on the front lines, and he doesn't stop there. He casts the net wider, declaring every American state a border state. It's a world, according to Texas, where the ripple effects of border crossings touch every corner of the nation, carrying with them an arsenal of drugs, weapons, and human despair. But Troxclair isn't just painting a picture. He's crafting a full-blown epic saga where American children are the unwitting victims of a fentanyl crisis and women are ensnared in a web of sex trafficking, all masterminded by the cartels. It's a dark, twisted narrative with every migrant painted as a pawn in this nefarious game. And who's the villain in this piece? None other than President Biden himself, cast as the unwitting, or is it willing, Patron of cartel operations, a man whose policies are supposedly lining the pockets of the very criminals Texas vows to combat. But fear not, for Governor Abbott and his Legislative League of Extraordinary Gentlemen and Women are here to save the day. They've donned their capes, ready to fill the void left by the federal government's alleged neglect. It's Texas against the world, or so they would have you believe, a lone star shining bright against the darkness of federal failure. And let's not forget the rallying cry 
a call to arms for all Texans, seasoned as they are in the art of resistance. This, they claim, is their moment, a call to defend their borders, their values, and their very way of life against the onslaught of external forces. It's a narrative as old as Texas itself, but with a modern twist. In this day and age, the battleground is not just the dusty plains of the Alamo, but the courtrooms, the legislatures, and the court of public opinion. Welcome to the new frontier, where the fight is not just against physical invaders, but against the policies, the politics, and the perceived threats to the Texan way of life. The grand stage is set once more, with Governor Abbott taking the lead role in this high-stakes Texas drama. He's not alone, though. He's got a whole posse of Republican governors from the great American expanse, all of them seemingly eager to lend their troops to the cause. It's like a modern-day Western, but instead of cowboys, we've got National Guardsmen and DPS officers hailed as the real MVPs for leaving their families behind to ensure that every Tom, Dick, and Harry in the country can sleep soundly at night. The pitch to the American people. Texas has got your back. Yes, in this narrative, Texas is the gallant knight and Governor Abbott the valiant steed, galloping to the rescue while President Biden apparently sits this one out. It's a classic tale of good versus neglect, with Texas cast as the last bastion of hope and determination in a world gone mad. We will never give up, they declare, as if they're leading the charge into battle, flags waving and trumpets blaring. It's not just a policy, it's a crusade, with Abbott and his band of merry men and women at the helm, vowing to defend the Alamo of American security against all odds. Is Texas's border strategy a bold defense or a political stunt in disguise? What's your take on this high-stakes battle between state and federal powers? Share your thoughts and don't forget to like and subscribe for more.